first of five riffs that I'm most proud of that I'll speak on uh, would be Walk With Me In Hell from this Lamb of God Sacrament album. I love that song for a number of reasons. I'm still really proud of it. We still play it a lot. Um, I felt like that was one of the first times, in my opinion, that we managed to put together a well-written song that sort of showcased a lot of what we did as a band. There, it, it, it had all the elements to me. Um, and the riff, it's funny, I remember the first time I played the, the first version of that riff was actually when we were recording Ashes of the Wake. I was setting up my gear um, to record my guitar parts for Ashes of the Wake, which was, was the album previous, and I was just warming up, getting tones, and I started playing that riff. And I remember referencing in my mind, referencing, uh, there's a Velvet Revolver song called Slither, and uh, there was also a Muse song that I can't think of the name of right now. Um, it was off the Absolution record by Muse, and it, it had that kind of like meandering, sinewy kind of, you know, winding down the neck riff. And so to, in my mind, I was sort of emulating those things which I was listening to at the time. Um, years later, it's, this is kind of a funny story. Uh, Slash and I have a mutual friend and Slash passed on to me that he really liked that song and that riff in particular. And my response was, well, you pro it's Slither, so you, it makes sense that you probably would like it. Another of my riffs that uh, I'm proud of, I feel good about. Um, it's probably more the whole song, but there's a lot of riffs in it, is the song Vigil from our album, uh, As the Palaces Burn. It's the last song on the album. And that was one of my sort of hour, but I was kind of leading the charge with that song, early attempts at having this grandiose like piece, you know, that had a, a really elaborate intro and, when, and moved into different moods and, and grooves within the song. And, uh, you can hear us really aspiring to that and, and executing it pretty well in a kind of a primitive way, but uh, I, I understand what we were going for with that and it's got some real heavy dirgy grooves and then picks up into lightning fast stuff. And you know, we talked in an er earlier piece about uh, Master of Puppets and how it, how it moves so many different places within the, course, within the course of the song and Vigil was kind of our early attempt at, at something of that of that level, you know, on, on that level of, uh, you know, diversity within the song. Vigil was a song that I started putting together on my own and I brought it into the band. There have been a number of these like that. I brought it into the band at rehearsal when we were working on songs and it really didn't go over very well. I, I played the first, you know, few riffs for the guys and they kind of just scratched their head and like, that's it? That's, that's what you want to do? And I was like, yeah, you yeah, know, come on, get, play it with me. It's going to be cool. I got this other part, but I can only play one of them. So, you know, you play this, I'll play this, check it out. And it kind of came, and they, they got it pretty quickly and understood the vision and then contributed their vision to my vision. And that's how it came to be. Another riff that I'm proud of, uh, that's a newer one that comes to mind is uh, Cross Off, which is on my new solo album, Anesthetic, which is, uh, coming out March 1st. Um, it's the song that features Chester Bennington on the vocal. And that, that riff, uh, the main riff to the song, what I would call the main riff, has been kind of incubating for a, lot, a, a long time. There's a chord progression under that riff that I have tried a million different versions of. And when we started pre-production and demos for the, for the Anesthetic album and for that song, Cross Off, I tracked the chord progression in the demo and then Something I haven't really done a lot of was took that chord progression and tried to make a riff out of it. So I don't know if that's getting too technical musically, but basically the, the way the chords move underneath of it, instead of just playing those chords, I made a riff that moved to each position of the chord, and that's what that riff is. So it, it has this kind of musical movement, but also maintains itself as its own sort of guitar riff. And that, uh, that's kind of some, some you know, me diving deeper into an idea and developing it more with the help of a great producer. I think the, uh, you know, the initial chord progression and ideas that, that you hear in Cross Off were kind of something I was not actively working on the whole time, but they'd been laying around for a while and I would kind of go back to it and reference it and try a different thing with it and never really stuck anywhere I was trying to put it. Um, but now I know why, because it was waiting, waiting for me and Chester and Josh to tear it open and make it into what it became. 
Another riff I'm proud of uh, that turned into a fan favorite song, and it's probably one of the easier riffs I've ever been a part of, is the song Descending, which is a Lamb of God song. Um, that's another one that was met with some apprehension by my bandmates. And in the earlier piece, we talked about Jesus Christ pose and how it's got that hypnotic, repetitive kind of thing. And so Descending was actually very deliberately a direct reference, even though the songs don't sound anything alike. In my mind, that was a direct reference to Jesus Christ pose. The fact like, can I write a song that's cool and that moves and has dynamic, but never really changes? And Descending does that. The, the chorus and verse are kind of the same riff. They, they are the same riff. They're just treated a different way. And that's how Jesus Christ pose is too. So that's the relationship between those two songs. Um, it's not a particularly hard riff to play, so if anyone likes Lamb of God and is trying to learn how to play guitar, I recommend descending because it does the same thing for about two minutes and it's just three notes. <laughs> there are a few that I bring in that the dudes don't like right away. There are some that I bring in that never see the light of day, and that's usually a good reason for that. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough crowd there in the Lamb of God writing sessions. Um, descending was a big stinker at the beginning. That, that, that caused problems. Um, so now whenever we play it live, I take a certain unique sense of pride in seeing the front row singing it all back to us because I'm like, see, I told you guys, this was a banger. Um, vig <laughs> vigil being one too, I remember meeting some resistance. But then there's some that, you know, they took to right away, Redneck. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a story about Redneck. Uh, it was the same week that I brought Descending in and I brought the beginnings and, you know, the music for Descending and the guys were all like, oh, this is garbage, you know, get this out of here. And so I got, went home and I got really, really mad. I was like, man, they don't, even, they don't, they don't know what they're missing, man. This is, this is, you know. And I uh, wrote Redneck and brought it in. And they were like, okay, now we're good. So sometimes criticism can be inspirational. The final riff that I'll reference that I'm very proud of is, uh, is, is Ruin um, from the As the Palace Was Burn album. And really, I just think that was kind of our... We had done an album before that, New American Gospel, and people were, you know, starting to hear our name. But Ruin was our first real, you know, opening to the, the masses, and that's what people started paying attention to us. And uh, that was a lot of people the first time they heard Lamb of God. And I think it established for us what would become our signature sound and that kind of groove and that kind of pulse that that song has. It still stands up today. We play it, we play it live frequently and the crowd's still bouncing up and down and people really react to it. And um, I think, you know, in the process of putting stuff like that together and seeing how a crowd reacts to it, we started learning what we were capable of as a band and what we were really gonna sound like and trying to refine that and what worked with people and what didn't, what worked for us, what didn't. And Ruin was the first time something really kind of came together into, some, into a song that we were like, wow, this is, this is really a banger. Mm -hmm.